Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to today's uh, session. And uh, Moodle MOOC 4. I hope you can see me well and you can hear me well. If you could add in the chat box where you're from, uh, this is uh, Nelly Deutsch, and I see that our speaker is here, which is great. People are going to be coming in as we go. And uh, tell us um, what time it is in your area. I'm recording with uh, QuickTime instead of Camtasia, and it seems to be really dark. Um, let me know in the chat box if you can see my webcam okay, because it looks super dark, like as if I'm wearing sunglasses. Oh, we've got Dirk from uh, Canada, Barbados. Um, okay, so it's just my end and uh, United States. Poland. Must be pretty late. I have 3 a.m. in Poland. Right. And did I miss anything? No. All right. So let's get started uh, with a little introduction of our speaker. You can see our speaker is right here, okay, with a star because every speaker is a star. Okay, a little bit about um, Justin Hunt, uh, who's a high, well, I don't know if Justin, if you're still a high school teacher, but he was a high school teacher and uh, an English high school teacher in Japan. He's originally from uh, New Zealand. He's also a developer and he developed the very, very, popular poodle with a double L capital letter at the end set of plugins for Moodle. He um, He's very involved in educational software, very passionate about sharing and caring. And um, he also supports Moodle.org right now. So if you have any questions, you'll see uh, Justin um, they're answering. I sometimes wonder whether he sleeps at all, um, but I presume he does. He lives um, in Nagasaki with his wife and three children, and and I don't know where you find time for this. Trains for marathons when he can. So I hope the marathons um, become a reality, and you don't. Uh, start sitting as much as I do and forget about running. All right, so uh, let me uh, pass on the uh, mic and everything else to Justin and go to the background here. And then I'm gonna go into another computer and check to see what's going on. There we go. So good morning, good, good evening, morning. good night. Yes. Just um, uh, Nelly, if you could just confirm that you can hear and see me, is that okay? Oh, your your audio is amazing. Very clear. Much better than that. Yes. But I, um, I've got a blue Yeti microphone, which is my my audio secret weapon, um, which is kind of overkill for most things, but it's amazing how useful that can become. Can you right, box? Can we, let me get started. Thanks everybody for. Um, I know that uh, some of you, like in Poland and Paris, it's, it's 3 a.m., so um, it's really, really great that you're, you're going to hang around for this. If you sneak away quietly, I, I won't say anything. That'll be okay. Um, I won't get mad. Uh, I did that last night, actually. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk today about Poodle and about how I use it. Right? So hopefully, uh, look, often when I talk about Poodle to people at conferences or on webinars, it's just kind of a capitation, you know, on kind of how to install it or how to set up this or that. And that, that, that's really uh, a good topic and it's something that you might want to um, might, might want to hear about. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I use it as a teacher because that's also something I get asked is, you know, 
how, how do you actually use all these these amazing things. Okay, so yes, I'm Justin, as Nelly said, and my Twitter handle is Tweedle Guy, although I don't tweet a whole lot. Uh, and you can contact me via Tweedle support at gmail.com. Uh, I was an English teacher, as as was in my as was in my introduction. But yeah, as as, as Nelly said, I actually uh, quit being an English teacher uh, in April this year. Now I'm full time on on Moodle contracts and projects and, and Tweedle. So if you have any projects or anything like that, please get in touch with me. It's not a huge business for me at the moment, but it's enough and uh, gives me a little bit of time to work on Tweedle, which you know, I've, I've really been a lot of trouble keeping up with it all because it's become quite popular um, with some of the time it's free. And Poodle, what is Poodle? Well, uh, I hope some of you know, but Poodle is a set of plugins for Moodle and it provides uh, various functions, which I'll go, go through in a minute, but it's free and it's open source. So there's no price tag on, on I will be introducing kind of things you can pay for later if you want to, like hosting and stuff like that. But, but you know, the basic Poodle, uh, it's free and open source and, and everywhere is good. Okay, good, Poodle. Um, okay, so use it for collecting data, uh, research studies. Yeah, well, lots of people use it for that. They, you know, they, they collect a whole whack of videos and uh, audios from their students and then they, um, they do stuff with it. So um, it's quite good for that, although it can be a bit of overwhelm if you have so many minutes of recording. Okay. And I know some people have actually said they use there's one more there. Let's see what we got here. Okay, there's another name there. You can just type in there if you've actually well one type in there if you have yet to use Poodle. Can you can you type that in there? Okay, so you have to use it. feedback module for the assignment, so when people record audio or video, the assignment can actually respond in time and then they'll get feedback, which is, yeah, it's quite fast. Okay, so a few people are, are new, so that's good. Okay, so that's quite interesting what Tweedle is. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about Poodle, so I'll, I'll go through and I will explain um, what it is. And then I want to move on to kind of the more teacher side of things. So uh, I want to talk about removing the teacher. So I, uh, I've been a language teacher myself for a number of years here in Japan, and that's where Poodle came from. I originally developed it as a, just an audio recording plugin for Moodle for myself, and then uh, I you know, added a few extra features and I told a few friends about it, and it kind of grew. So. In some ways, it's hard to put into a box because you know, the features just came on as we needed them rather than from some initial design. Um, uh, but one of the things I found with language classrooms was that the teacher in many classrooms does a whole lot of the talking and it's really a waste of time because uh, especially if they're conversation classes, we want the students to talk and the teacher can actually get in the way. So I was at a function recently and a, a good friend of mine there and, and somebody asked, I said, how do you keep your classes interesting? And this friend of mine, he piped up straight away and he said, oh, I'm, I'm just really funny, you know, I'm just, I'm just really, really funny. And he is funny, but, you know, I think this is a good example of, you know, he probably gets in the way, he probably doesn't give his, his, his students enough a chance to be the funny one or to be the one you know, holding the floor. Um, so today I'm going to talk about how you can use Poodle to remove the teacher. And this will be talking activities based on Poodle. So this is not um, all that you could do with Poodle by any stretch of the imagination. It may not be what you need for collecting data, but if you're having you know, kind of conversation style classes, these are things you might do. Okay. And finally, the rules. So just uh, somebody just asked there, I'd love to use it in the editing. You can actually do that. Um, yes, it's just a little easier. So you can, and we'll we'll see that actually. We'll see that. And uh, during this presentation, uh, I've there's, there's actually a demo site for Poodle, demo.poodle.com, and I've prepared a course 
for this particular presentation. So if you go to demo.twitter.com, you'll see MOOC, the MOOC course here. And you can go in and you can try out the activities that we're talking about in the presentation here. The, uh, the logins and usernames, usernames and passwords, they're all on the top page of the demo.twitter.com site. So uh, this login is a student. I've disabled the administrator login just because I didn't want anybody to come in there and do anything, anything for the presentation. But I would like to actually be a teacher and not uh, see the look under the hood, just look in the mirror. The sample username would be 01, and the sample password is also 01. Okay, so it's 01 to 50 for students. So user 49 is username 49, and the password is 49. Should be enough login to allow the people in there. Okay, I'm not quite positive that that's actually right. Let's have a look. I'll, I'll, I'll drop into screen sharing shortly and just show you um, Google in action just a little bit because otherwise it might get a bit dry, especially for those people who aren't so familiar with Google. But let me just quickly uh, cover one or two things before we do that. Sure. Um, your Pebble says he'd love to screencast for installing it as a complement to the PDF on the site. Well, yeah, the uh, Poodle, you know, one of the things that really lags behind, of course, as, as often happens, is the documentation side of things. And I do have screencasts and um, documentation, but they, they get out of date so quickly. So you have to keep going back and, especially with screencasts, you have to keep going back and doing them again. The, uh, the whole website's just been redesigned, and I haven't uploaded it yet, but it will be uploaded next week and at that time I plan to do a big documentation push because um, that's something I'm really a little bit embarrassed about is how wonderful the documentation really doesn't match with um, how things are now in some ways. So I'm sorry about that but I'm quite right there's a bit of a lack there of information as to what you need. Um, the, uh, so anyway basically Poodle is audio recording and video recording and the drawing process in Moodle. So uh, in various locations in Moodle, your students or you can record audio. Your students or you can record video, or you can use a whiteboard to draw pictures. And you can also draw over a background. So math teachers like to do this by setting a background with graph paper and having your students draw graphs onto the picture. Um, you know, in, the, uh, in the new era, we know we've got tablets and iPads. Hopefully, we'll see a lot more of these kind of drawing activities where people can just use their finger to draw lines through things on a whiteboard. And beneath, beneath that, you see some, uh, some cool interactive widgets. And it, what you see there is, a fl is the flashcards and a calculator and probably a stopwatch. So these are, these are widgets that you can just drop in anywhere into your activities and it's like a Swiss Army knife, really. You can, you can make whatever you like out of it, and I'll demonstrate using those widgets in some of the uh, activities that we'll do today. Um, the uh, the name Poodle, it, you know, it was one of those things. It, it looks like a stroke of genius now because I've rounded Moodle and it's so short and it's got a you know little domain name. But when it when I, when it first happened, I, I had a black dog and uh, I would have called it Poodle P O O D L E, but the domain name of course was taken. We had this idea of setting up a, an alternative to the big language labs, which is why we had the LL at the end. And the P was for pairs because at that point the king or the, the, the um, key, the key part of Poodle was the pairwork application. So we're going to have a language lab with pairwork, and it all came down to Poodle. Um, but in a way, that none of that's really relevant anymore because most people don't use the pairwork module. And, gave up on trying to create a language lab at that time. I was you know, trying to box myself into something that was you know, pretty 19th century anyway. Okay, um, a list of the installed plugins. Well, here we go, I'm onto the, the push button. Here we are. So these are the, are the Poodle plugins, and there's a whole bunch of them. So uh, at the very middle, of the, you'll see there's a Poodle filter, and that contains all the stuff. That, that's where all, all, the, all the action really is, is happening. And the rest of those, the assignment submissions and the repository question types, 
they're kind of wrappers around the, the functionality that happens in the Poodle toolkit. So rather than make all of the various plugins kind of stand alone and have to repeat a whole lot of code, uh, I've kind of bundled all that shared code, all, that, all those widgets and all the size and the stuff into the Poodle filter, which makes it much easier to maintain. But it does mean that if you want to use Poodle, you must have the Poodle filter. That's the, the one plugin you must have. And the rest of these are all optional, and you can pick and choose them if you wish, or you can install all of them. Uh, and let me just let me just read them out to you so it's easy to hear what they are. So at the very top, we've got the assignment submission 2.3. So there's actually two assignments in Moodle, the new one and the old one. The old one, you shouldn't really be using that anymore. New one came out in Moodle 2.3. So we've got a submission type, so students can record audio or draw pictures or submission to an assignment. We have the feedback module that also works in the assignment. So even if the assignment is a text one or uh, whatever kind of assignment you, you've given them, if you set one of the assignment feedback types to be cool, uh, you can actually record your voice uh, as feedback for that student or draw a picture even. I just referred to before the assignment type 2.2, so very similar to the, uh, the other one. So we have the question type. So in quizzes, you can set um, recording questions. So they have to record a video or an audio in response to something. Uh, you might also uh, have the students draw a picture in response to something. Um, this is the HTML editor icon for Atto. There's also an HTML editor icon for TinyMCE. So it's a little bit uh, confusing. Basically, they, they do the same thing. But in Moodle, you have an HTML editor with a number of little icons on it. And one of those, or se several of them, four or five of them, are the Poodle icons. So you, you can record audio or video. And there's actually two types of HTML editor, just to confuse things. Uh, this is the new one. This is the old one. One of the challenges that you have when developing for Moodle is they just keep changing everything they put into it. So they, you know, they, they have an assignment. They, to make a new one, they have an editor, they try to make a new one, uh, and the poor old you know, plugin developers like me have to get stuck off and, and rewriting things. So. And then we have the database activity field. So the, the Moodle database activity is kind of a lesser known activity really in Moodle, but it's great. It's really good for language uh, teachers and for making kind of peer consumed activities. So you'll see that today. It's really, really good. Uh, and Poodle has a field that you can put in there. To describe it briefly, you can basically create your own like form. And students fill in this form and press submit, and then all their students' entries are, are listed on the listings page. So if you put in this form an audio recorder and tell them to record a story about um, their first day at school, then uh, the result of that is you'll have a whole big list of all your students talking about their first day at school and you can all listen to each other's first days at school. Uh, so it's a really, really useful activity. It's a bit strange that uh, so few people seem to use it or know about it. And finally, we have the repository. The repository is a, uh, a way of selecting files in Moodle, but you actually have a Poodle repository there, so you can sort of select any file you can record. But I'm going to go, I'm going to level up here a little bit, and I'm going to try. Ah, let me, let me answer some questions before I do that. Um, Moodle does not have Poodle as standard, no, and it probably will never be core Moodle. I, I think that's just not the way they're going with Moodle. So you'll, or you'll have to install it as an add-on, but it's quite easy to install using um, some of the later features that are coming out. Right, okay, that's, that's pretty good. Accessibility, good, good stuff. Um, in fact, there's more I can do about accessibility. That's something I'm, I'm, I have on the back burner. Let me just go through then and uh, share my screen. I'll just, I'll just, just walk you through some of the, uh, the Poodle things we've discussed here before we go into the activity. Otherwise, um, you, know, you might fall asleep, especially if it's one from Harris and Colin. The, um, at any time, feel free to just go onto the demo site and just have a little play around. I think you can do that and still listen to me. But I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. Maps function. 
the screen sharing is going to take 30 to 60 seconds to wait or something like that. Okay. Your screen is now being shared. Right, so here is the demo course. This is demo.poodle.com. And uh, see, I've, I've temporarily disabled the uh, admin access just so that we don't get anybody coming in here and ruining any tab. And this is the standard user access or the student access. Username 01 to 50, password 01 to 50. This demo site is always here, so uh, you can come here anytime and just play around with Poodle. It's got the latest Poodle on here. Uh, and usually you'll have this demo course. Today we're working on the MOOC course, MOOC 2014. This is based on uh, a course that I had for my students in high school. I removed all of the um, copyright act or something that was associated with the text book for ones that you could, couldn't really be used or weren't meaningful out in space without the context of the course that I was teaching, and just left some of the, I guess, more fun ones in. So let's just. Uh, have a look at some of the features that I talked about, the key features, the core features of the program that I have. So here we have a forum. This is the HTML editor that we talked about before, the HTML editor. And these are the Poodle icons here on the editor. This is the Atto editor. And there's a similar one, TinyMCE, which is the older one. And you probably wouldn't even know the difference just to look at them. They're very, very similar. Uh, let's record audio just to works. Hopefully it works because we're getting a, already using the microphone for that. Here's our cue cards. So this is our little audio recorder open during the pop-up. The first time you do this you'll have a, a few permissions dialogues. You'll have to click yes, 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 allow. Uh, and if you select to have your browser re record, remember those settings, you won't have to do it again. Okay, so now we're recording. And you'll see here in the very latest version of Poodle, we've actually, added, we've actually made this pausable, so you can pause your recording, so you can just pause that, and then you can continue. And when you stop, your recording is converted to MP3 right there in your browser, and it's uploaded. And when you click insert, there it is there in the HTML editor. When we display this uh, forum post, that will actually be expanded out and become an audio player. And if you don't believe me, wait. Okay, let's do a video. Okay, again we've got the video being used by Visual Studio so let's put this in blower. Uh, now the video recorder works very differently because, I'm going to take that away, it's not working because of the, uh, yes I could just hijack our, our, audio, our video recorder so let's uh, put this down. Um, let's have the whiteboard. Uh, Poodle has a number of whiteboards I've been working very hard on them actually recently because uh, I see them as something that can be really, really useful, especially with the, the tablet. Uh, this is a smaller whiteboard, but I, uh, I prefer for the editor because it, it fits in the window nicely. Here we can just draw pictures of things. So let's draw a picture of Nelly. Come on, Nelly, let's do it. Let's have uh, Nelly in here. In the younger days, she was blonde, so she was like this, like that. <laughs> Blue eyes, blue eyes, and uh, she was always smiling. Okay, and there, there's Nelly. I'm going to save that picture. Uh, even if we don't save that, that's actually uh, there's nothing to save. I'm going to insert. Okay, and there's Nelly's picture. So now we've got an audio recording and uh, a picture right there in our forum post. Let's go post that to the forum. We have Nelly's picture, and we have an audio recording. Okay, and if we set it up, you have a lot of configuration options for Poodle, but here you can put a little icon here which only displays for the teacher or the admin. So for people who want to you know, download the recording sometimes, you know, they're using for presentations or uh, whatever, then they can, uh, they can do that from here. There are, in fact, other ways to download files that are not, not part of Poodle, but it's part of the user. And it's actually a really quick way that many teachers will just do that. Um, so I'm sure you, you, you can use Poodle in a large extent. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to go back and stop sharing my screen. Okay, I'm sure we'll be back here. Tiny MC with our red colour, but it kind of is a little bit bad because the style of high poly operation is just a bit grey. So as we do, can switch to um, compact mode and run the program that way. Any questions about what you just saw? What you've seen there? Okay, right, let me go through then and uh, move on to the guts here, the guts of the talk. Okay. These are the interactive widgets, so um, we didn't see those in the previous screencast, but um, let me just quickly explain them. This is flashcards, so flashcards um, are very simple, they're, they're just whizzy, little, the little flashcards that whiz in and out, uh, they go, they can flip, so you can see the reverse side of the card, uh, and that's basically it. They have a game-like feel, and students really enjoy using them. Uh, they're also very space efficient, so you can drop a, a flashcard widget into a forum post or into a description of an activity. You can drop it into a question even if you don't want to talk about it. Uh, they're very user facing um, because they're based on the Moodle project, so they're not restricted to any subject area or any Moodle. They can be anywhere, uh, and they're quite useful. If you make the data for your flashcards, make a matching question in Moodle, so it's a regular question from, from the uh, from the question bank, and then you just tell the flashcard which matching question it should pull the data from. So there's a number of audio players. This is the uh, the mini player. So many times you don't actually, you don't actually need the whole scroll bar and countdown and you know volume. But you, many times you don't actually need any of it. You just want a start and stop button, and that's what this is here. So that's what this is. Just a one word. This is a countdown timer. This is a calculator. Sometimes we use this for math classes. Sometimes we use this for um, speed reading classes. Uh, quick reading quickly classes where students need to work out using a formula. Uh, we'll read this audio. This is a once player. So this will play a piece of audio and it will play it just once. So we'll use it to simulate the test. Um, probably not. See, it's, e easy, it's easy enough to do. But it's best to use this for simulating the test rather than actually doing the script score. Here we have a whiteboard. This is the older computer whiteboard with the flash only, but you can see we're drawing over the background here. Of course, it's possible in Java to do whiteboards. Um, and this is a scroller. Uh, I, this is something I started, but I didn't really feel was a particularly good success, you know, so I, I just, I just kind of, it's still there, but I, I let it go there. This, this scrolls the text vertically, so if you're trying to simulate a, a, a reading quickly activity or you're trying to make your students read faster, you can insert the text between certain tags and uh, you'll get this scroll that appears there. And this is a stopwatch. Uh, enough, enough fluster, I'll, I'll skip past it. Basically, in removing te the teacher, we want to give the students more air time, remove them from scrutiny so they don't feel like they're being looked at, uh, and let the students be teachers because they, they'll often, you know, without a whole lot of explanation, be able to figure out what to do on an activity and teach each other. Uh, and removing the teacher allows all of that to happen, so it's really good. And now here's the talking activity based on the quiz. Okay, so um, a particular paradigm I found was quite useful with um, working with students, and especially with kind of like um, classes where I wanted the students to communicate together, just, just naturally, was I put two students on one computer. Uh, these, were, these were simple non-graded activities, and they promoted collaboration and communication. Students would just naturally start, you know, talking to each other about how they should do this activity, group around the computer and they feel like they're doing it together. And then I, I change pairs every now and then so that it's a different two students on the one computer. And it really works pretty well. So what kind of activities would you use for this? So this is a very simple activity called Say Yes. 
you can see here we're using the countdown timer and uh, it gives the students sentence stubs or question stubs and the instructions say ask your friend questions and Mr. Mason say yes eight times. So they've got one minute, a countdown from one minute to zero. And in that time they must ask a question to their student and encourage their student to say yes eight times. So for example, like you love nothing, she would have been said, don't you? Uh, you have some good friends, don't you? You are very cute, aren't you? Okay. You will go home tonight, won't you? So students make questions like this and the department should say yes. And if they it's not true, they'll of course say to them no. So they need to think about what they're saying. Like no, of course they're yes to and they answer my question no eight times. This is in the demo course that we saw at the North Point that uh, Tim was talking about. Actually, just to, uh, on, that, on that previous slide, the reverse is also possible. There's also a saying no activity. So with two students on one computer, you, you, be, you need to do that, do that in turn. So that often makes student A say yes, and then student B say no, using a, a different set of questions. This is this is Super Poodler Tom Rawson, he's also here in Nagasaki, uh, he worked with me on Poodle quite a lot, um, and he put together this, this tongue twister, and he says this tongue twister, and the student has to say, repeat the tongue twister in 20 seconds. And that's also there on the uh, course, you can see that. So the good, the good thing about this particular activity is that Students, students, as, soon, as soon as you show them the activity, they start doing it. They don't really need to be explained it. They get it right away. And if you add audio recording to this, it's really a good way of introducing audio recording because there's no hesitation in terms of what, what should I say or how should I do this. You know, what they should say is right there in front of them. And it's not long. And all, they have to, all they have to do is say it in 20 seconds. So often there's a bit of hesitation for audio and video recording getting the students started. And if you can take a lot of the variables out of that, so there really isn't very much for them to think about or get distracted on or hung up on. Uh, that's a really good way of introducing it. And if you do audio and video recording regularly, then um, that resistance kind of slowly goes away. But in the, in the early stages, something like tongue twisters is quite a good way of doing that. Yeah, and presentations of time. Just, just uh, off, often I'll, I'll give them one minute and I'll say, um, I'll say, okay, now student A. Student A, please stand up. Please talk for one minute to your partner about your father or your mother or your sister. And then they have to talk for one minute and the other student's timing them with the timer. And just having that timer makes it feel gamey. It's really not much of a game, but it's amazing how uh, different it is having a timer compared to not having a timer. And these are flashcards, so I introduced these briefly before. So you have, in this case, I've given them 100 questions, and they have to see how many questions they can answer in one minute. Again, it's two students on one computer. And because it's your own classes, depending on how well you know your students, I'd often customise the questions quite heavily so that they are kind of regional. They talk about local shops or local restaurants, local things, or they are even about students in the class. You know, you really know which particular student goes to basketball practice in every night of every week. Never really enjoyed that. Might have some a bit of a joke in the class. So I might add something about that student here and ask a bit of questions, and then students look forward to seeing that their uh, their own name or other students in the class's names show up in the question. Yeah, these are oral answer questions. So there's no um, there's no recording component of this. This is I mean you could, but at this stage this is just just have two students on one computer and just talking. Just drop into screen sharing and just show you um, this information. I'm not sure how many of you can hear me, but it might be nice to see it. I get accused of talking very fast, so if I'm talking too fast, please just, just say that so I um, can know what you mean. Okay, so here we have drill 100 questions flashcards. So this is all about uh, the previous slide that we have. Uh, here we are. And 
in this case it's two minutes, and so the countdown time is equal to two minutes, and uh, there's a hundred questions um, directly through like this. So you can see it's got that kind of like game and kind of feel. Which do you like better, horror movies or love movies? And you click on it, and you get a sample answer. I like none of the movies here. Okay. What was your last name? My last name is Mark. So I will often use this if um, I have um, guest speakers or um, exchange students come to come to come to school. So American students and like some of the Japanese students. You sit together. And having them both look at the computer screen and working on the flashcards together, um, it, it makes it, it kind of removes a bit of that confrontational feel. The student doesn't feel they have to make you know beautiful English. They just have to kind of ask the question that they see. They have to read it. The other student then just has to answer it. So it's a pretty easy entry. So I guess I guess a lot of this is driven by the fact that I'm a high school teacher in Japan, where the students are not you know very fluent in um, in English. So I can uh, feel like I'll, I'll get a bit of confidence in my own English. Just while I'm here, I'll just quickly show you how these look at when you're designing the questions. It's probably something some of you will think about. Um, when the documentation goes up next week for you, there'll be a lot of these little things that are laid out for you, but I'll show you them now for the moment. Um, here it is here. So there's a, a set of strings, and you just insert those strings. So you've got three little titles of the countdown. The next second just is one sentence you work out from. Okay. And here we've got uh, three little types of flashcards and the, the name of the flashcard, the name of the question, how many questions they answer. So we've got three in here. So what you might do is I'll just show you something in Kakao here. I might explain this bit later on, but so if you're uh, you, you have to look at a little cheat sheet from the uh, the Poodle site to see how to do this, or come to one of these sites, my site, and just see how I've laid it out. Really nice uh, sort of one page or two page PDF arranger for you very easy. But um, in the meantime, what you can do is use the Poodle repository um, to do this quickly. So, this is a repository system in uh, Moodle. And you're using the Poodle widgets repository. We actually get a list of the widgets here. Okay. And I've, these, this, these are basically, basically shortcuts for creating those bullet points of strings. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to make a much more useful version of this um, very, very soon. This is just something that we have now that you could use if you want to get up and running right away. So if you want to put in, for example, the countdown time. Okay, so let's, put, let's put in the countdown time. Okay, and that inserted a, little, a crafty little link which will actually show the 60 second countdown timer. And we can edit that and kill it is. We can make that an 80 second countdown timer if we wish. Okay. And if you want to do the same thing, let's try again. Find here. Choose uh, the repository. Choose a widget. And let's put in the calculator. Okay. And we've got plenty of it. Now, when we display this activity now, hopefully. We should have an 80 second countdown timer and the calculator. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to actually make a, a much nicer version of that, which is gives you more options. And you can configure that right there uh, in the screen very soon. I'd like to do this version very soon, but uh, right now that's how it plays out. So I'm going to stop sharing. Stop sharing my screen. Okay, I'm very sorry, Anna, Anna, Anna's moving up to the top of her internet. Okay, um, yes, I see, so I'm just, just reading your, your comments there. Yes, you, you're right, and that, that's, uh, that, that poodle filter string. You know what, I am going to do that this afternoon. I'm actually, after I get off here, I'm going to make up that poodle filter string. I, I, there is one there, but it's just not as yet accessible as it should be. I'm going to make up a poodle filter string cheat sheet for you all. I'm going to put that somewhere. Uh, Nelly, please tell me where to put that. And I'll put that so that you can download it. And I'll also put it up on the uh, the Moodle website. But I'm putting it off for a, a, a while. But I'm going to do that this afternoon. Uh, Nelly, please tell me where to place that. So you that can add it on. See that so that 
you can add it. There are two courses. One is the beginners, Moodle for beginners and Moodle for non-beginners on Moodle for teachers. Okay. So that would be easy. You can also update. You can also update the Poodle because I think I've got the old version. Yeah, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, ready? Let's look at this. The Moodle for beginners and Moodle for non-beginners are there. I'll put that in. Uh, put that as a resource somewhere in there. And uh, the other thing is, if you just contact me, I'll send it right back to you. Just look for my email address or something on the. Uh, in fact, if you send me an email saying please send it to me, Justin, I'll send it back to you. But it will be up on the website very soon. Just Okay, and now let's talk about, uh, about peer contributions. So this is another really, really key, important key factor, key um, way of removing the teacher is where the students are providing the materials that you use um, for consuming English. So they're, they're making the English and they're also consuming the English. So rather than you making these activities or you finding these activities, you have the students make them. The making process can be in pairs or in groups, or it can just be individually. And for this, I often use um, a data as an example, which I'll introduce shortly. Here, we're using a forum. So this is a sample activity. It's also on the Moodle for Beginner course here. Talk about your earliest memory. Uh, you've got the forum. It's a, it's a regular Moodle forum. You set it up as a single, single discussion. There to tell them what to talk about, and then Poodle anywhere. In this case, it's Tiny MCE, but that's all right. Um, it's right there on the editor, on the editor toolbar. And student clicks on the microphone, and they can record the audio. And we saw that I did that that before, so they can see exactly exactly the same thing. You you know, as I said before, you often have to hold your students' hands a little bit, especially when they're first doing it. So. Audio and video recording is fraught with technical pitfalls. There's, there's all sorts of areas that students can fall down in that aren't their fault, and some that are their fault. So if you're going to assign these kind of things as offline homework, you really need to make sure you've gone through it in class a few times first so they, they really kind of understand how to use the tools. Um, so this is a forum. I find forums are very good because there's a lot of clicking involved, and uh, particularly with my students, the course will be in English, but they don't read the English. They just kind of like look for the biggest button and click it. And so there just seems to be a lot of ways in which students could kind of go off off, off on their own little tangent. So I find that a bit tricky with the, uh, the, the lower level one, the higher level one. Is important. Um, this is database activity and this is a sample activity where the student has to draw pictures in response to an audio recording so this works very well and I've used this in a number of um, different activities in this case they listen to the description of a person and then they use the whiteboard to draw the picture and they save it and after they've saved it and only after they've saved it they can send they can then see their peers pictures the pictures of their parents that their, their friends have drawn and uh, usually I have a picture prepared that was the original picture. In one case, this was the picture of a man in Jaws standing on the boat shooting at the shark. And in another case, it was the iconic picture from the movie North by Northwest with um, the Alfred Hitchcock movie with um, Alfred Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock. He's, he's running away from the populist American life, which is chased by Jaws Jaws. And I described the picture in audio and the, uh, the, the student listens to the picture, they have, to, they have to listen a few times, then they draw the picture and they save it, and then they can see a real accurate picture. And it's really a huge um, uh, payday when, when, they, when they, they've completed their own picture, which they're usually very happy about, but then they can see what their friends have drawn, and you know, it's, it's quite exciting. And you know, those, those pictures remain, so you can go back and look at 
was later on in, in students would do that with the underclass and you'd see them messing around looking at pictures of other things in the in underclass. I think it wasn't Anthony Perkins because Anthony Perkins. The half played a very important role in uh, text. I thought it was Gary Cooper. Okay, in, this, in the same vein, this is a database activity. This is the what happened activity. So in this one, I, I show them a video and I say, please record your voice telling a story. And the, the students then record the, the, the voice telling the story and they can la later listen to what their friend said. Um, again, because this is audio recording, not perhaps the, the fun to do is doing a picture. Um, there's a little bit of resistance. They, they do enjoy it, but there's a little bit of resistance. Um, so for Jonathan, it's good to do regularly. Let me just quickly show you the database assignment. So where is it? Where is it? I'll just quickly drop into screen sharing mode. What I'll do is I'll actually go in as a student. So let me log out as uh, log out as my administrator and log in as a student. Um, let me just check the screen now. Let me even do this by the way. Login. And here we have uh, one of the drawing activities that I spoke about previously. Now, if you if you quickly can see, this is here. Draw the man, listen to the description, then click add entry and draw the picture. Good luck. So the first tab there's no actually the add entry tab, this is the add entry tab. But you'll notice that before you add your own entry, you can't see any of the other entries. So you need to add one or more entries before you can see the third entries. So we'll listen to the audio here. Okay, um, We have a whiteboard. Let me redraw the picture of the man that was in the audio. Is it working this time? Okay. So we draw our man. Um, and it's automatically saved. You can just press the Save and View button. And there's user 29's picture. Okay, so now I can see my own picture. And if I look at the list, I can see. That's the picture of the other, other students have also drawn. Uh, this picture, because it's not me, all I can do is see it. But for my own picture, I'm actually able to go back, edit the picture which I drew previously. So I'm going to put there on that. So that's an example of using the Doodle, sorry, the Moodle database activity with Moodle, in this case, it's a drawing tool. Um, this is the this is one where I use a snap. There's also a camera in in Moodle. I can actually take photographs from the actual web camera. And this, this web camera profile pictures, and I use this on Halloween. Again, actually, uh, unfortunately, my camera is being used by the. Uh, Halloween, I would have my students take snapshots of their scariest face and then we'd up upload those and they'd be very fun for me later on. Um, so if they just want to show scary faces, they can use that method. Um, and, and other things as well. Let me just stop, stop sharing my stop sharing my screen. Another thing is we could uh, we have a, a last part of the um, removing the teacher type of activities is a pair assignment. This is where I have the students complete an assignment together. Could they complete it together as a group or individually? Um, I was never very hot about grading my students. Um, 
was a really in high school. I, I would use these activities for practice and really we could like grade them here and that gives me tips as to what different activities you might want to use. So in this case the the interview your partner activity. So again this is to get around some of the hesitations students had for recording themselves. They they'd never pushed a button on it. And so they were they you know getting ready to 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 record. You know they they said let's record our audio or voice or our video for two minutes. Um, and they did a fifteen minute class. You know they wouldn't they wouldn't start until the forty eighth minute. Um, but if we do this in pairs and we have one student interview the other, then the student who was doing the interviewing will push the record button, and then everything goes a lot quicker. case we have them interview their partner. Included here with what I used to talk about this quite a bit with my with my with my video C because I seem to be C too. It, I think it's frozen. Oh, you know what it was? It was me trying to. Um, oh yeah, I disabled it. Mm -hmm. Oh well, it's okay. I, I, you know, I don't look that good anyway, so it's all right. Um, as long as you can hear me. Um, and uh, poodle pair work. This is my student's favorite thing, really. And the way I've talked about it in various places, it's never been something which people have picked up because it's quite difficult to use. But it is really, really good. You do want to use it, you probably need to talk to me about various things. But this is the administrative console. So you can basically drag and drop your students into pairs or assign, you know, assign in bulk pairs randomly from the students who are logged in. And they can they can actually see their partner's video uh, and it's like it's video pairs. And it works as a filter, so you can drop the filter string, which we saw before. You can uh, pair with filter string somewhere. One of your activities, so you might have something you want to talk about, a set of flashcard questions or something, and then you could also put this pair with widget in there, and they would, they would see each other's face and hear each other's and hear that uh, hear the audio of their partner, and they could have conversations. Usually, you can do this when they're in the same classroom. So there aren't there aren't really the management tools that would be required for doing this in an off in a, uh, a remote learning situation like we have here with Web IT. That would be a little bit difficult. Really, a replacement for the, the big language labs kind of headphone style pair work, which is good. Um, a lot of the talk of, of those types of pair work sessions are actually addressed here in, in Poodle pair work. So it's a wee bit, wee bit tricky to set up. Not not that, not that tricky, but um, students drop out of the session every now and then. But Okay, so that's the end of my talking. If there are any questions that you have that I haven't covered yet, please ask them now, and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Mike. Let me know, and I'll pass it on to you. Uh, Justin, I have a question that I've been thinking about for a long time, and that's the whiteboard. Do you plan on yes. doing anything with the um, sorry with the uh, besides the um, you know, the freehand drawings, any other kind of tools for drawing that are not freehand and maybe mind mapping or something? Sure, yeah. Initially, I really, I really don't want to give the students too many buttons to push, you know, so my, my uh, approach on that was, was, to, was to just, just have freehand. I didn't, I didn't even have a, 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 um, an eraser tool, you know, they just, because my students would, would mess around trying to make this perfect line do um, but with the, the, latest, late, the latest JavaScript whiteboards that we put in there they do actually have some drawing tools so let me actually show you those windows over here that I do show you that yeah Tom sketchpad you took the words out of my mouth um, Tom yes um, a writing tool like a pen, a writing pen, or electronic pens. Mm -hmm. You can see, I've got, I've got the um, this is the literally canvas 
whiteboard and it's got a, it's got a line tool here. Okay, so you've got the line here. Uh, and then you've also got this, um, this square tool here. Okay, so it's got some of the features and it does in fact have a text tool also. That's enough. Yeah, but that's enough to make a drawing as well. I mean, we just need a circle. Yeah, you just need to. In fact, I probably probably have a circle. Um. Uh. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and that would make it perfect, because then it could be free, but you would have everything that you need. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the um, the, the, I didn't actually write that whiteboard. That's written by some very clever Java people. It's open source stuff, and they they talk. They're, they're quite big on adding tools to it. I don't know why they haven't got a circle tool. Probably um, they do, and I just haven't kind of enabled it. So we can certainly look at that. I, I I'm a little worried about clutter. Sometimes when it's just too many too many options, it concerns me. But I guess um, I guess it's a it's a better number of options. And other and I, sorry. Are there any other questions? If not, I have a lot of questions. I wanted to ask you about Mac versus PCs, Windows systems. Um, mm -hmm. How does Poodle, you know, manage itself? Is it just as compatible with Apple stuff as it is with um, Windows? Yeah, it should be. It should be the... Um, yeah, many of the widgets are Flash-based, but... Um, but, I've, but they also have JavaScript equivalents. So they'll, they'll also, for example, the countdown timers will work on an iPad, as will the flashcards. Uh, just the audio and video recorders don't work on iPads, but they do have, um, have buttons allowing you to upload a video, to record a video from your iPad, to, uh, to get close to what you, what you can get on the desktop. So it's not really the same. However, for um, the desktop near Mac, or Windows, it shouldn't really be any different. There might occasionally be um, a little hiccup on Safari um, on on Mac that, that you don't see on Chrome on Windows or something like that. Mm. It's really a browser specific thing. I have heard that some of the new features of the whiteboard don't work so well on, on different browsers. I have, I have yet to confirm that myself. That's something I'll probably do this week after I launch my my new desktop cheat sheet for the week. Um, but in general, Mac should be equivalent. But maybe you're right about Safari, uh, even though it's going to be upgraded very soon with the iOS 8. Uh, there is a beta Safari, but maybe that's why the chipmunks come in because of Safari's um, instability right now. Because sometimes it's yeah. there. You need to ref I need to refresh constantly and then it's fine by the way. It's just refreshing the page. You can't be on it for too long. Yeah, it's I'm having really, I'm, still, I'm, still kind of, I'm still a little bit uh, not sure where that problem's coming from, but um, it's just that. Uh, I don't think it's Poodle. I think I think it's um, it's a Safari Mac thing. It could be a, uh, that's right. It could be a hardware thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I that that's the feeling that I get. Any other? What Dirksy was earlier, but um, the uh, Poodle works on um, Android. There's a question there. But audio and video recording are restricted to file upload. Same for iPad. Yeah, so, so you can record audio and video on iPads and Android tablets, but generally, you don't. You won't see a recorder. You'll just see a button which says record or upload a video. So you can then click click to record a video using your your device's video recorder, and then that will be uploaded to to Moodle and Poodle. But it, it isn't it isn't really as reliable. It doesn't have that same kind of instant feel. You can't actually read from something on the screen at the same time as recording, for example. So I'm working on an iPhone, an Android application. Um, that will, you know, instead of seeing it, and it will just quickly open a very small application that will make it a bit easier for those mobile device users to use Poodle. Because there is a Moodle apps um, 
so would it work in the Moodle apps? Would it work together kind of thing? It would work similar to that, but a little bit different. The Moodle, the Moodle, my Moodle app, um, it uploads the audio recording to your um, to your private files, really, which is not as immediate. So in, in the situation, say, of an assignment, and you want the students to record their audio, ideally it, sh it should record on there using the application. And then when they close the application, they should be back on the original page that they were on with their audio recording actually loaded up on that page. So that's that's how it will work. I think there was a question there about from um, Pablo. I don't know if Pablo is still here. He had a question about. He's saying that he's having a hard time installing it because um, right. he really likes really. it. The best way to well, the best way to install it really, if you if you're of that ilk, is to use Git is um, another source control thing. But if you're, not, if you're not the kind of person that gets around to um, using the command line, then it's not really an option. Um, and uh, now, since Moodle 2.5, they actually have the ability to install plugins directly from your Moodle, your Moodle um, website. Sites. Yeah. The institution area. And so that's the best way of doing it. First, you'd go and install the, the Moodle filter from there, and then after that, you choose the various modules that you wanted to install, and then you'd install those. Um, I did, I did, I do, and did still have like zip files that you can download and install. But a lot of people get in trouble with those, and I think if if they have trouble installing using the Moodle inbuilt installer, then probably you know trying to install via zip files is going to be even more problematic. So I would prefer people use the simple tools. And the up, yeah, the upgrades work the same way, right? Because now there's a feature on Moodle where you just uh, update things right through your Moodle. But Pablo, yours might be an edge case. There might be some uh, something going on there. So um, uh, if you can, if you can use screencast o -Matic, Pablo. Um, and so take, take a wee screencast of that happening um, and then send that to me or send a link to me, um, then that would be really helpful because I can actually see you know, exactly what's going on. Um, often, often you know, just going back and forth to your email is really tricky. Yeah, I, I, I totally um, get people to use Screencast-O-Matic because otherwise I don't know what they're talking about. That's a very, very, uh, no, it's a very good feature. <laughs> With, with GNOME, you use in, in Moodle 3 with GNOME, that's right. Um, so you're, you're not on Windows, Pablo, that might be. Okay, so I'll try that. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I find using, using Linux or as a desktop, it's never really, the, the, the browser never, never really was reliable. So uh, you can't really use it, but for Windows, it's a, a serious work of fiction. Um, any other questions? Pay Moodle. You don't have to pay Pablo. Pablo, you can also, um, you don't have to pay now. You don't have to pay a lot of money, I think. Um, where is it? You can get, you can get this, um, this free Moodle hosting, which um, they run from a site in New Zealand called, um, you, know, it's, you may already be using that. But I will actually bring, be bringing free hosting you know, probably in the next couple of months. And it's you know, kind of cheap hosting. It'll be like you know, $29.95 a month, that, that kind of hosting. Cheap Moodle hosting. Um, what is the limit of recording time you written for the audio? Do you have trouble there, Shannon? Yeah, exactly. Um, Janice, that's a really good point. Didn't cover that today, but there are two audio recorders in Poodle. And the MP3 recorder, which I suggest most people use, at about two minutes it becomes unreliable. And that's because in the browser it's actually doing the conversion to MP3. And then you get browser timeouts or out of memory issues. The reporting back to the user that they've had a problem is not that great. So, um, if you want to do recordings that are over two minutes, you should use the other audio recorder in 
Poodle, which is the Red 5 audio recorder, and that uses our tokyo.poodle.com recording server, um, that, that'll, that you'll get, you can, you can do much longer recordings there. If you choose to record those, to convert those to MP3, um, again, you, you may have issues, but if you just leave those as the SAV, then uh, that's a very reliable way of recording longer audio. You're a warrior. You're a, wa you're a, you're a noodle warrior. <laughs> um, yeah, Janice. Um, again, if you have problems with with that, because I know I know exactly what you're talking about, so there's, there's no mystery. If you have problems with that and you can't get it to work, just just send me an email, and I'll I'll get back in touch with you. Would you recommend a free Moodle host? Well, with an e, no. Well, would I? I mean, would I? Do I? Do I have a, a Moodle there's, host to recommend? There's no host? such thing as a as a free one. There's no free because. Well, this, um, this one called. I'll just get the link. Hold on just a second. Um, but. But you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it for like heavy use. Um, Stuart Moodle. I think he's out of Moodle, isn't he? Didn't he just leave Moodle and go into? Uh, he yeah, let he. That's, that's, that's pretty much that's Julian, isn't it? That's, uh, yeah, he went. <laughs> yeah, he did. He went to Canvas. Didn't he? Canvas, Canvas. That's right. Which is not a bad. Thing. <laughs> no comments. No comments. <laughs> well, you know, I, mean, I guess you know, you, someone's going to someone's going to pay you, right? Why, 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 why not? Right. I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't. He doesn't like Moodle, it just means he needs to, to, to look after his family and stuff. So, right. Um, yeah. People can be a bit, uh, treated like a religion, you know. You can't just go in there. So I'm just looking up that free Moodle hosting for uh, Tableau. If, if somebody asked you this, um, but freemoodle.org, that's what it is. Freemoodle.org. They offer free Moodle hosting, but it's, it's course hosting, not site. So that you don't get your own site, you just get a course. And I think your course has to be open. So that's probably good enough for somebody who you know, is really just trying to investigate how to use Moodle and get up to speed with it. But do they have Poodle there? No. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Pablo wants Poodle, the whole thing. The whole idea is that Pablo is crazy about Poodle. So, you know. There's no free Poodle hosting yet, but there will be Poodle hosting, and, and I think that's good. Um, I'm not too, not too sure about what, what, what this Nomia business is, but um, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have a good answer for you there, Pablo. Um, but you you can practice on Moodle, you know, on Moodle on uh, Moodle uh, for teachers, Pablo, as much as you want. You can even bring your students in, so that that's not a problem. Practice on demo.poodle.com also. You can practice, That's true. But, you know, it gets wiped out every, every uh, 24 hours, so you can't bring anything in. You have to copy everything and do it yourself. Right. Um, get those students working, good idea. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, for some of you, it's really deep into the morning, and, and uh, I'm amazing that you're still awake. So I'm, I'm going to sign off here, so I have to go and make, uh, fulfill my promise to make that Poodle Quizzle cheat sheet for everybody. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Really, really, your, your kind of questions, please contact me on that email address, which I'll type in again for you. And I'll try and answer them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Justin. And I'm looking forward to um, the upgrades. Yes. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.